Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic Inexorable video. In this video we're taking a look at how we might go about differentiating arc sine of x, okay? And this is another sort of uh, problem where just like um, in a video that I did not so long ago where we are going to be looking at differentiating the um, modulus function of x, it's another one of those ones where it's like where do I even start, right? Because I know how to differentiate x squared. Uh, you know, a constant times an x, I know how to differentiate sine x, cosine x, all of those things. But how do I differentiate arc sine x? And just to be very clear, arc sine x is the inverse function of sine x, if you're not familiar with this notation. I've written here in the notes section, arc sine x, it's the same thing as the sine to the minus 1x. The reason why I like to write it as arc sine x instead of sine to the minus 1x is that it's bad notation, in my opinion, to write sine to the minus 1x because when you raise something to the power of minus one, that's taking the multiplicative reciprocal um, or inverse of that thing. So uh, for instance, uh, five to the power of minus one is a fifth, right? So sine to the minus one should be one over sine, but it's not, it's the inverse function. So I prefer to write arc sine, it's more clear what it means, okay? So arc sine, um, inverse sine, it's not the same thing um, as cosec, which is the which is uh, the multiplicative inverse, the reciprocal function. Okay, so that's just something to see out of the way. The only other thing that we need to know before we begin is that the, the trig identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x is identical to one all of the time. Uh, that's the only other thing that we need to know. Um, of course, we need to know our differentiation too, but that's in terms of identities and things like that, that's it. So let's just begin. So we're looking at when y is equal to arc sine x that's that's what we're looking for and we want to find dy dx right so we don't know how to differentiate arc sine x we can't just differentiate it because if we if we knew how to do that then the video would be over so we're going to say we don't know how to differentiate arc sine x and, and maybe we don't but what do we know how to differentiate that's kind of similar to arc sine x in a way well let me just throw this out there we know how to differentiate sine x don't we and arc sine x is in a way, you know, it's kind of similar to sine x, you know, they're inverse functions. So what we can do is we can actually apply the sine function to the left and the right hand side of this equation. So we can say that sine of y is equal to the sine of arc sine of x, okay? So all we've done in that step is we've just applied sine to the left and the right. It was y equals arc sine x, now it's sine y equals sine arc sine x. Sine has been applied to both sides. Fine, and that's fine because you can do the same thing to the left hand, the hand side and the right hand side of any equation that you want. So you can apply the sine function to both sides, that's absolutely fine. Now, why do we do that? Isn't that more complicated? No, no not really, because sine of y is therefore then equal to, well, what is sine of arc sine of x? Well, arc sine is by definition the inverse function of sine, which means sine of arc sine, they cancel out. They do the opposite thing. Whatever arc sine is doing to that x, sine is doing the opposite. It's undoing it. So we can say that's equal to x. Applying sine to an arc sine of x is the same thing kind of as squaring a number and then square rooting it um, or you know adding five to a number and then taking five away right they're just inverses uh, so that's fine okay now we have a sine we have an x great there's no more arc sine we can differentiate but how do you differentiate sine y with respect to x hmm. we need to use implicit differentiation implicit differentiation basically the the idea of it is that if you have a function which is given in terms of y for instance sine y which is what here you just differentiate like normal as if it were an x and then each term that has a y in it you simply multiply by dy dx so for example the derivative of sine y with respect to x is going to be cos y because the derivative of sine is cos but because it was in terms of y we need to multiply it by dy dx okay this comes from the chain rule, and I'll do more videos on it if in the future if it's required. And we also differentiate the right-hand side. So what's the derivative of x with respect to x? Well, it's just 1, isn't it? The derivative of x is 1. Okay, from this point, we can make dy dx the subject. 
we can divide both sides by cos y. So we get 1 over cos y. You might be tempted to write this as sec y, because you're right, 1 over cos y is indeed sec y, but don't do it. Don't do it because I'll show you something. Now, you might also say we're finished. dy dx is 1 over cos y. Brilliant, we're done, we're finished. Technically, you're not wrong, but it's ugly because we don't want the right-hand side to be in terms of y. We want it to be in terms of x. We want dy dx equals some function of x, don't we? We don't want a function of y. That's disgusting and gross. So we want to turn the right-hand side into a function of x. Now, we can actually do something really clever, and this is where the sine squared plus cos squared is identical to 1 comes in. So let's just kind of uh, come over here for a second, and you know, I'll do this in a different color for everyone. Let's do it, uh, let's do it in, let's, what's a nice, a nice color for us? Let's do blue. It doesn't really matter. If we, if we already know that sine squared x plus cos squared x, or actually, I won't, I won't actually use x. I'm going to use another variable. I'm going to use y. I'm going to use y. It doesn't matter. The, uh, the variable inside of those functions, it doesn't matter. So sine squared y plus cos squared y is still equal um, or identical to 1. It could have been anything. It doesn't have to be an x. It can be a y. It can be any letter that you want. Or it can be a picture of Willem Dafoe. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just an arbitrary variable. It's always identical to 1. That's the formula. Okay. Um, how do we deal with this now? What are we looking for? Well, I'm going to show you something. If we can rewrite this cos y, you probably can't see actually, my, my fat head is going to be in the way. Here it is. If we can rewrite this cos y in terms of sines, then we can do something really clever. And I'll show you what it is in a second. So how do we, how do we rewrite cos y in terms of sine? We can use this formula. So what we do is we make cos y the subject in this formula. So let's take sine squared y away from both sides. We then get cos squared y is identical to 1 minus sine squared y. I hope we're happy with that step. Good, good. And now we simply take the square root of both sides because at the moment we've got cos y squared. We don't want cos y squared. We want cos y. So we undo the squared by square rooting. We get cos y is identical to the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. Okay, we're taking the square root of both sides there. Now we can rewrite cos y as the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. They are the same thing. Okay, and again, it doesn't always, it doesn't have to be y, it could be anything. So it's the same with x. Cos of x is identical to 1 minus sine squared x. It's just a fact, it's just true. So if we come back to our original thing, we can say that dy dx is equal to 1 over, and instead of cos y, we can rewrite this as the square root of 1 minus sine squared y, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so this is true as well. dy dx, we can deduce that this is true. Now, why? What, what's the big deal? Well, do you remember at the beginning of this problem, we actually said what y was? y is arc sine x. That's what we started with. We're trying to differentiate y. We know what y is. It's arc sine x, right? So if we know that y equals arc sine x or sine to the minus 1x, however you'd like to write it, we can then say that dy dx is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared of y, which is arc sine x. And you'll see why this is brilliant in a, in a second. So... Okay, it looks very gross at the moment, but it's fine. Now, when we write like sine squared x, what we really mean is sine x squared. The reason why we do it is just because it prevents us from having to write another set of brackets around the same thing. So if it makes it easier, sine squared x, we're not doing, we're not cheating, we're not doing anything mathematical. I'm just going to rewrite the same thing um, slightly differently. Sine squared of arc sine x means sine of arc sine of x and then squared okay that's that's what it means so that's what it means which then means what we can do is we can say dy dx equals one over the square root of one minus okay and now let's evaluate this thing again what is sine of arc sine of x whatever arc sine is doing to x whatever it's doing sine is undoing it and it's bringing us back to x because they're inverse functions. So sine of arc sine of x is just x. But 
we then need to square it because there is a squared there. It's sine squared of arc sine x. That's x, arc, sine of arc sine of x is x, and then squared. So sine arc sine x squared just turns into x squared, okay? Just like that. And we are done. So very interestingly, the derivative of arc sine x or the inverse function of sine x is actually simply equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Um, this is an interesting result because you might, you know, when you differentiate sine, you get cos, right? When you differentiate cos, you get minus sine. And you can do this with lots and lots of trig functions, right? What happens when you differentiate trig functions or integrate them as well, it tends to be that you get something else trigonometric. You, you know, sine turns into cos, cos turns into a sine or something like that. But when you try to differentiate or integrate inverse trig functions, you actually get these algebraic expressions, like 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Where is the trigonometry in that? It's, it seems like it's nowhere to be found, right? And so that's why I actually find this so fascinating. It's almost as though the trigonometry has disappeared when we differentiate it, and we get that. So that's our result, guys. The derivative of arc sine is, of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos on differentiating weird and wonderful functions. Um, and uh, if you do, yeah, definitely leave that in the comments below. Give this video a like, do whatever you want to do. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.